Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Kate Gleason and I'm the membership director and before I turn the stage over to these lovely ladies, I just want to uh, start by thanking you all. I think everybody knows, I hope, if you've gotten your emails, that it's member appreciation days. So now through November 19th, which is Sunday, we're offering um, not only events like this, but 20% off membership. So if you are up for renewal or even a few months early, now is a great time to take advantage of our sale. We're also offering 10% off all weekend long in Sassafras, so if you want to dine with us today or all week. And then extra savings in the Garden Gate shop. So if you're at the individual, the garden, or friends and family level, you'll save 20% instead of your normal 10. And if you're already at the festival level, you found our best value of membership, you always save 20% there and you'll get double punches on your punch card, which is also um, a great opportunity. The other thing we have going today, I'm sure many of you noticed all the vendors here outside. We have uh, Perennial, you can make a fun holiday hand warmer with Perennial Recycled Crafts. We have Four Hands Brewery, Cat Merrick. Siteman Cancer Center is here giving some giveaways. They are a new sponsor of the Member Speaker Series, which is our monthly uh, lecture program, so we thank them for their support. And the St. Louis Herb Society is also here as well, so thanks to them. So please check out their booths after this program. Everybody will be here till 4. The other thing that's going on till 4 o'clock, if you haven't already stopped at the little shop around the corner, which is the gardens um, shop that is just at Shaw and Vandevender by the Donut Shop, it's their member holiday open house as well. So they have some sweet treats over there. They're offering an extra 10% off for all purchases on top of your member discount and have pulled out some great uh, holiday items for the day. So please take a look if you have time today. Just make a stop over there. They are open till 4 as well. And then the last plug I'm going to make, the garden itself is open till 4, so you can wander to the garden gate shop, but also our annual holiday wreath display and auction. So we're so lucky to have nine participating florists and garden design shops who have designed and donated a wreath for us. Those will be, open, uh, those will be up all season long for auction. You just bid online or stop at the membership desk. They'll help you make a bed if you're interested. But more importantly, just check out... Uh, what they've done this season. I think it's a very eclectic array of wreaths. So that'll be open again today until 4 o'clock. Now it is my great pleasure to introduce the team from Plant Haven Farms. First we have Pauline Sella, who is a member uh, of our members board and who we asked to do this and said, so we want you to go big. And she really took it seriously. You can see the display right outside the auditorium and then obviously the fun we're in for the next hour. Uh, Pauline is the owner of Plant Haven Farms Garden Center, which has three locations in O'Fallon, in Oakville, and their newest location in Olivet. And she uh, started a career in the banking industry, but then decided to have a little more fun with gardening and garden centers. So uh, it's obviously been successful for her and her husband. So we're so excited she is here with us. We also have Rhonda Lynn Meckel, who is a freelance designer. She currently serves on the board of the American Institute of Floral Designers. She has more than 40 years of floral design experience. She started when she was 16 years old. So an incredible career, an incredible life's passion designing fl flowers. Uh, she's decorated at the White House for Christmas, the Rose Bowl Parade, and she noted that she did the uh, Chihuly Gala back when we had Chihuly in the garden for the very first time in 2006. She was the designer be behind all the florals for our gala. So her history with the garden goes back very far. Uh, she said she's done presentations like this all over the country, but she remembers her very first presentation was holiday decorating at the Missouri Botanical Garden in the Ridgeway Visitor Center. So years and years ago, but it comes full circle now that we're in this beautiful new space. It is my pleasure to welcome them both to the stage. So please give them a round of applause. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm turning it over to Pauline. Well, thank you all for coming, um, and we have a special happy birthday to Kate today. So everybody a little round of applause. Happy birthday. Um, it's my trusty helper, Bridget. Um, well, first of all, if you don't know anything about me, I have garden centers, um, like she said, around, the, around St. Louis. And one thing I do not believe in or haven't for 23 years is the word faux. Faux foliage just has never been in my vocabulary. But faux foliage is so spectacular now, and the quality and the real realness is unbelievable. So I've never done this before, so it's the first time for me. I did this at 10 o'clock this morning, and I feel like this is all over again, and I'm already nervous. But um, So I wanted to show you how you can incorporate faux foliage, faux foliage, that's a big word, and fresh. So you have the scent of Christmas or holidays, um, but then when you know, these, they don't last forever. They die back or the birds get them or the squirrels get them. You can then still have a beautiful front porch pot. This is obviously a very large 
display of a French port pot, but um, we thought since this is a big audience and this is an honor to be here, we would, you know, make it a big show. So I can Vanna White this out here and show you all. So you all back over there, you all can see this. Um, and I'm going to just show you how simple this is. Um, I guess first thing I should show you is what I have in here, which are um, these greens, which would be like a cedar cypress type green. But if you really, I mean, from afar, it probably looks really real. But if you touch it and feel it, it's incredibly realistic. Um, and then um, I have eucalyptus. And this, to me, is the most real version of eucalyptus I've ever seen. So these are called picks. So just simple word. I didn't know what these were six years ago. So that's why I'm you all know this. And sorry, I'm already boring you. So I'm going to add the magnolias for interest in these corners. I have, um, I guess to tell you the background. So I've learned a lot about being a florist. I'm not a florist, never will be a florist, but they have the hardest job. I spent literally hours filling this with cardboard or with styrofoam to raise it up and then filling the oasis center with water to keep it there and taping it. It is so much work cutting all of this and fitting that. So every arrangement you get at home or, or delivered to you or you deliver to someone, it is so much work that goes just to get the container filled before you even put the flowers in. So when you get that bill from your florist and it seems like a lot, it's because there's so much work that goes in it. So I've learned a lot this week with Rhonda. So back to my container. So I'm just filling in the corners so you have some interest all the way around. Because if this is on your front porch, you want to see all four corners. If you walk up, if you walk around, your windows in the back, you maybe have something on the side. You just want to have interest everywhere. And with the magnolia, I personally think the back side is prettier than the front. So, which is not, not something ladies would probably ever say out loud. Um, so, I've got enough of this in here, I think. And now I'm going to add some fresh greens. And this is really just to give it some softness around the bottom and the smell of Christmas when you walk by it. And this obelisk, you could create something like this really, really simple by even just taking three or four twigs from your backyard, putting them together, taking tying a knot with wire, put it in the middle of your pot, and then fill it. Um, I mean, everything in your backyard is perfect to put in a container. You, I mean, obviously, I want you to come to Plant Haven and buy all this stuff, but you can, you can do a lot in your own backyard. Greens, if you happen to have a magnolia tree, if your neighbor has one, I mean, there's a lot that you can do. So um, I'm going to add a few more greens. And then when the season's over and these have dried out, you can take feathers, you can take anything you want for, I think I'm good, um, for the rest of the winter on your front porch or back porch. So, and then in this case, you can see all the way around, that's a full pot, maybe you in the front can smell. So, that is porch pot. Number one. And then Rhonda and I, well, thank you. And so Rhonda and I are going to work up on the stage. Yes, I need Vanna up here. Great job, Pauline. Thank you. We tried to set the stage like you were entering someone's home. Most times in the holidays, that is a time when friends and family gather. And Christmas is my favorite time of year because it brings out the joy in everyone. So we've started with a little vignette for the foyer, or the foyer, however you want to say it, tomato, tomato. And oh, sorry, we, we have a beautiful, large urn here. Can everybody see that? Here, I'll pick it up. To me, it reminds me of Bridgerton. Have you guys <laughs> watched that? It's really, that's revived a lot of interest in this style of container and style of designs. And Pauline can tell you where she sourced it from. And um, what we did in the middle of this container, this urn, we put a plastic liner, just like you'd put at the bottom of a basket, you'd set a plant in. But underneath that, as Pauline said, are layers of styrofoam. 
Right, to, I mean, literally to the top. It gives a foundation, just like if, when a home is built, the, if the foundation's not strong and things are moved, things shift and your arrangement can fall apart. Especially if it's on your porch and the wind comes. So that's one big right. benefit. And it's heavy, those styrofoam is this thick, so it's, it's really heavy. Right, and you can even add weight to the bottom of your container on your porch if you'd like to. Right. So, um, Pauline, would you like to tell them a little bit about the orchids that are in here? So these are just regular Phalaenopsis orchids. They're nothing too fancy, but they serve the purpose. You can put any kind of orchid in there. And orchids last for three, three four months, depending on your light. I know people say put an ice cube in there. I think, honestly, you have to take it out of your arrangement, put it in your kitchen sink. I do mine like every Sunday, depending on the light. Let it drain through and put it back in. I mean, orchids will last a lot longer that way. The ice cube, I don't know, just 50-50 on. Yeah, mine um, all died with the ice cube <laughs> trick. Um, but this, and the other thing we added to this arrangement was this garland. And this garland is mercury balls that you can move this, take apart and you could either put them inside your arrangement if you didn't want to have them hanging. We just thought hanging was something that, that added a little interest if you walk up to it and add a little sparkle. And the top of this urn is a scalloped edge. It's absolutely gorgeous. So around the liner then we tucked in wet pieces of floral foam. There's plastic, a sheet of plastic on top of the foam, the liners in the center, and the foam. That way we could add the fresh pine and it would have a water source. So as she mentioned, the mercury ball garland, we also have that in the top of this beautiful Italian bowl, for those of you to see, since it's a little heavy. So this bowl um, I sourced out of a supplier out of Italy. It's handmade. I mean, it's truly beautiful. You don't have to use anything like this, but if you have a, something special, a trophy, a, a pot that one of your grandchildren, children made, you know, something that means something, I think that's a great centerpiece to start with. So the same, we did the same thing. Um, it's really heavy. Yeah. Teamwork is a dream work. <laughs> we did the same thing in the bottom of that. We have, it's, I went ahead and lined it with plastic just because we were going to have a liner in the middle and I wanted to put fresh foam around the outside. So this was all greened up on Friday. It was in the cooler over the weekend, and we did refresh a couple of the mini hydrangeas because you know they have a tendency to wilt and go down. But one tip to keep them lasting longer is you get alum. Alum can be found in most grocery stores. And I learned this at a floral symposium with AIFD. You take your hydrangea, you cut it, you dip it in the alum powder, and then you put your hydrangea in your floral foam. It'll last forever. I mean, longevity. I had the pleasure of doing Pauline and John Sella's daughter's wedding last June, and we used a lot of hydrangeas. Every hydrangea was cut, put in the alien powder, and the alum powder, pardon me, and put on the arbor outside of the tent, and that, the, that arbor lasted for what, how many days? Oh, at least a week, and I will tell you, being pan a little overly passionate about plants. I'm like, Rhonda, are you sure hydrangeas is gonna be 100? Oh my gosh. They were spectacular. And they were still spectacular in the, in the containers that were on the tables well after a week. So, so it really does work. It, it's a really good trick. It's not just a myth or something I've read in the book, tested, tried, and true. And you find it in your grocery store in the canning. I'm not a canner, but I just learned this from Rhonda. You find it in the canning section. So it's just a powder. Um, so anywhere you find canning supplies, you should find this miracle substance. And might be able to use for other things. We haven't, we should have, right. we we should have experimented with Somebody asked us about the Christmas greens. Could you cut and dip your greens in that? I've never tried that. But if it works on a hydrangea, I don't see why it wouldn't work on that. But I like to do tests. I like to test something before I throw it to the fire. So if you're going to try that, it's worth the try. Um, the center of this has another liner. And it's filled with like these orbs. Right. Everything is fresh in here, yes. except for the orbs. They're a mossy yes. boat material. So we continued the color green all the way to the base of this container for an, a nice, solid color grouping. Of course, pardon me, Santa. I've been standing in front of Santa all this time. Um, <laughs> I might not get any gifts this Christmas. <laughs> yes, let's talk about our journal. Yes. Yeah. So 
We came up with the idea, Pauline has all these wonderful journals, all different types, at her stores. So my sons use their journals every morning. They do their Bible study, they write in their journals every day. So we just thought, oh, we should show a journal and have it out when your guests come over. So have them write the date and maybe write down their favorite Christmas memory, Christmas past or something of this year. And then Pauline has something to share about And so that. I thought another idea um, that you could share this, actually Robin does this at her house, which I thought was brilliant. She has this when she has a dinner party or just even friends over and ask them to write something about their meal and about their stay or about their experience. And she goes back and looks and then writes before they arrive, or maybe after, writes down what she served, who was there, and then she can go back and look at, I mean, hopefully they're not comments like the chicken was dry and <laughs> the gravy was horrible, but um, I think it was a really clever, fun thing. And I think if you have, you know, young children, it's fun <laughs> if they have friends come over to have this, this book this, that you, they can write things in. I mean, it doesn't always have to be, you know, going to someone's vacation home or some place like that. I think it's just a fun way to start, a tradition to start, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, I thought the dinner party was clever, but I think you could use it for anything. It's also a great book to keep garden notes in, which is probably what it was originally purchased for at the store, um, because some people love to keep track of what they plant where, they forget, it doesn't come back up. So it's another great tool, and it's really pretty, and it's got great paper. And then if you start that long after you're gone, hopefully your kids will pick it up. And they'll look at it, and you can leave a little note for them in there, too, like, Johnny, really, you never picked up your room. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to write. So Pauline talked about faux foliage. Some people call it permanent botanicals. My and friend. she talked about how realistic it really is nowadays. So this urn we did with the styrofoam. There's a liner in the middle, just like this one, and we put our orchids in the center. And then Pauline creatively put the curly willow around the outside of the urn, bringing texture and adding rhythm to this design. And then we're going to take some of these faux picks or permanent botanicals. They really do look realistic. I mean, totally. And you can just gingerly or with force put them into your styrofoam. <laughs> and you know, if you're frustrated during the day, just put some pics in there. It feels so good. So this is another version of willow, curly willow. And just to show you how pliable it is, I mean, if it's a couple years old, it's going to snap. But it literally will turn. And you can make anything out of it. You could make a circle and you know use this as a decoration in the front of your pot. You can make it big and tall. You can put it in your planters. It's just really versatile. Or when we get to this table, we run it down the middle of the table. But this is what Curly Willow starts out looking like. And there's a yellow version. And then this is because it's fresh, and eventually it turns brown. So just so you can get an idea of how that came to be. And when it's fresh, it's very pliable. So you can manipulate it. And we'll show you as we go to the large table setting how it can be used in other ways instead of just coming up or going around the outside of a container. And these large pine cones are great. I mean, I've had mine, I don't even know, maybe five years, take them out of my pots, put them in my garage, in a box, forget about them till the next Christmas. So it's a great investment. You can take pine cones off your backyard, your neighbor's backyard, if you're taking a walk in the park. Um, but a good pine cone is a great feature for the for fall holiday. And in this case, we can put him right in the middle. That gives us a good focal point along with the orchids but and adds some interest. Two. So. Okay, we can slide that back. Great job. It's really heavy. Thank you. Okay. Now move over. So the power of color. Red is such a powerful, energetic color, and it's great at the Christmas holidays. Both of these garlands used on here are it's faux, it's permanent botanicals, are fake, whatever you want to call it. And there's two together. So instead of just stringing them end to end and letting them hang over the fireplace, I took the last third of the garland on your left, and I twisted it together with the first third 
of the garland on your right so that that center portion was very thick and very lush. And then I extended it down the side of the, the fireplace itself. Then the garland was simply put into the middle. There's two of them. And you can move those ornaments or spheres around any way you want. And I attached that with the stems of the garland because there's a wire inside of here and it's great to bend those around, of course, and fluff them out. But it's also great to secure things. That's how the ribbon was secured. The white ribbon was used to mimic. Right here, it's just, it's just yes. loose. So it's just a piece. I could have made a bow, but by using a piece and flowing it through and giving it height in between each piece or each section, you add rhythm again, just like you did with your willow. We also use that in the wreath. And Pauline orders all this great product. And I brought it and I said, what do you think about this ribbon? Do you think we should use this on stage? And I said, oh, it's glittery. And I, then I remembered back at market, I walked into the showroom and I'm like, oh my god, everything's glitter. And if you know me, there's nothing about me that's glitter. So I was like, what do I do? But I have to be on trend, so I have to. So I went a little, not too crazy glitter. But I will tell you that glitter is really big for the holidays. So you'll seem to see it everywhere, from clothes to shoes to everything. Sequin um, pants, but jackets. But I will say, once you have it up here mixed together, you know, a little glitter really does add kind of the final touch. Um, but yes, I did say, oh my God, did I buy that? Like, oh. So, <laughs> like, well, I have this red, but it um, really does. It does it looks great, and it's very stiff. It's really a fine ribbon. It's a number forty width, so it's very pliable. You could put that in and make a bow if you'd like. But the beauty of not making a bow and just running it through loosely, then after the season's over, you can roll that up, and you can use it somewhere else the next year. So you're not throwing it away. You're not wasting it. I'm big about repurposing. And you can use it somewhere else and then give your mantle a new piece of ribbon because she's got a whole lot more. Right. You have to come back. You can't just buy one and done. Yes. Um, but the one thing I was going to tell you about this garland, which is so great. And again, faux is not my favorite word, but for garland, it really is because this, especially the new stuff, and, and I would suggest investing, doesn't matter where you buy it, but a good piece of garland. And you, if you put them next to each other, you can tell good and not so good. But what's so great about this is it's really pliable. It can go up your banister. It can tie around the spindles. If it's on your mantle, like Rob, uh, Rhonda was saying, you can wrap things around them. You could put hurricanes on your mantle mm -hmm. and, and help secure it by wrapping these around the base of the hurricane. It, when we get this far, we, we have it again on this table. I seem to drop things. Um, it's OK. Um, Some magnolia. But you can use it for so many purposes. One year, I took it and put it around the chandelier over my dining room because I really wanted to put a real garland. But then I realized it was going to be a mess, and God forbid, it fell on all the food. But the faux <laughs> was really great. And it just added a little touch above the table. So there's many purposes for garland. Many purposes. And speaking of the magnolia, you'll notice that in the garland itself, I have placed real stems of magnolia. This will dry, it'll be beautiful. The year that I helped decorate the White House, there were magnolia garlands that stretched, stretched across the ceiling in one of the hallways. It came down the doorways. It was all about nature and natural things. We took salal or lemon leaf and made garlands out of that. And so even as it dries, it has a different look and it still looks really pretty through the holiday season. So moving on, we have another urn. I'll move it out here. Let's move it to the front. And this one is all fresh. Yes, ma'am. I just have one question. I noticed on one side of the mantle, you have, is it books underneath the bar? Yes, these are just decorative books uh -huh. that we tacked up just to give it a little interest. So good eye. Thank you. Um, when doing fresh greens or faux greens, Pauline and I both like to use more than one kind. This one has silver dollar uke. Josh, I'll show. Has pine. Oh, sorry. Magnolia, salal. That adds or texture salal. Salal and interest. Leaf. And then we also have some of the large sugar cones. I love those sugar cones. So there again, lots of styrofoam cutting and prepping, but there's a big designer brick of floral foam in the middle so that's got a great water source and you can just add water to keep it fresh for the season. And if we have these 
and seasonably lovely warm days, which are great. They're not great for green. So you want to keep it wet or, or hose it off, depending on what your vessel is. Um, but you want to keep make sure the styrofoam is constantly wet, and you want to make sure that these stay pliable and have some moisture. Yes. One thing I've noticed in my travels is the Midwest doesn't do this very much. When Christmas is over, I've worked in a retail shop for many years when I first started, and we would try to use up the rest of the winter greens in the back of funeral work because nobody wanted to see it anymore, but it would support the design we were doing in the front. When you go to Mexico, their lobby designs always have winter greens all year long. So don't be afraid to go out on your yard and do clippings and cuttings and bring that into your home. It'll make everything smell fresh. It'll add interest to regular foliages and flowers. And you too can, maybe you start a new trend and use it all year long. Move this back. You got it? Yep. Okay. So the table setting is where family and friends will gather. And just as we put a garland on the mantle, there is a garland that runs down the middle of your table. And Pauline's going to talk to you about this paper product that's on here in a little bit. But the garland was put first. Then I took curly willow, fresh curly willow. It's very pliable. I made sure I made three different garlands secured with small zip ties. I love zip ties. I like going to the hardware store. There's so many cool things you can use from there. So the zip ties secure that together, but I made sure there were beginning and ends. Just like a loaf of bread you get, it's got ends. Well, the same with this. My ends are together in the middle, and, and the middle are the beginning of the beauty part of the curly willow comes out at the end. So you have that same flare at each end of all three pieces, and it comes in to embrace these beautiful urns. So since Thanksgiving is literally around the corner, um, we can't forget Thanksgiving. So if you set this up on your table this weekend, because it's a lovely weekend, and you want to start getting ready for the holidays, but you want to have Thanksgiving, a really simple way to add the look of the season is to add some feathers to your design, which you can leave if afterwards, or you can take them out. <coughs> but Excuse me. Feathers add a great addition to Thanksgiving, which leads us to our hurricanes. Um, these hurricanes happen to be hand, I'm gonna take this down, handmade um, by a gal called Jan Barbolio. Um, they're made in Mexico. They're fabulous. I mean, to be a treat for anybody. Um, but you don't have to use something like this. You can use just a regular hurricane. You could use Pretty a much a big base, anything. Put a candle in it, or we did for Thanksgiving is to put some feathers in it. Um, it's just you know, need something tall if you have a runner down the table so you have some height. So, And the one thing about this is you place these large containers, I'm sure you all know this, so you're not blocking line of sight. So that people can talk across the table to each other. You can't maybe yell down at the person at the end, but you know. That's okay. Maybe you put the person at the end that there's a little tiff going on. <laughs> Not saying anybody here has one, but you know, seat your guests wisely. So in the middle of each place setting, we put these darling little place cards. And place cards can be more than something just to have the person's name on it. On the back side, you can write a conversation starter. Ask a question. How long have you lived in St. Louis? Where did your, your family originate? Um, what's the most embarrassing moment of your life? It's funny little things to get people talking because it will open up the conversation for the day or during the luncheon. So I want to talk about this table cloth or table runner. So it, is, it comes in a tube. There's many different versions of it. Um, but what, what's really amazing about this is you can have you know your aunt Bessie's fancy linens that you don't want to ruin, which is why people don't want to put them on their table because God forbid the gravy gets put on it or a glass of red wine. You can still have your beautiful side linens by adding this runner. And the runner can go down the middle or the runner can, like my house, I don't even put the linen out anymore. I take two of these and make two table, um, two sides so it makes a full tablecloth. 
and it's on a roll, and the roll is pretty thick because we used a oh, I'm making sound at the same time. We, we started the roll of paper at this end. And the other roll, it's tucked under there. And but we still have a lot left. Yeah, we have half a roll, more than half a roll left. Um, and, it, it, and they come in all different seasonality, everyday use, um, whimsical. I have one customer that they come in, um, it looks like a football field. And she can bring, comes in and buys one, seems like every month, because her grandson likes to play football on her kitchen table. So she, she lays it out, and he brings his little, I think, army men, and he plays football with them. So there's a lot of uses. Um, you can draw on it if you've got young people at home and they're bored at the dinner table, maybe put some crayons out there. Um, so there's lots of uses for it. Um, and we decorated the table, obviously for Thanksgiving as well, but um, chargers go a long way just to add some depth. Um, in this case, we're showing melamine plates, the new plastic. Um, they look real, they look like china, they dishwasher safe. You know, now everybody doesn't want, I don't even know if people even have china anymore, but it's, it's a great alternative to have something that looks lovely, something that looks, you know, rich and, and holiday-like. And each place setting is not the same, because on this one, we, we, have, a, we, have, a different we have a different style, same coloring uh, as far as that wood tone, right. but it's all cut out. Right, so you don't have to have matchy-matchy, or you could even layer on top of each other. Um, so lots of uses, and, and these can be used year-round. I mean, rattan doesn't have to be for summer anymore, I don't even know if this is made of a Plasticky material doesn't have to be used for anything, and they're easy to wash. We've got some fabulous linen napkins up here uh, that have a reindeer on them, and then Pauline has these great antler napkin rings, which we have tucked in fresh pine. The beauty of this paper as well is if you do use fresh garland on your table, and it's been on there a few weeks, and you have to clean it up, you don't want all those needles going everywhere. You can just roll this paper up or sweep it off after you pick up the garland. So it's got lots of wonderful uses. You can shake off what's on there and put it in the recycle. So we're all about that being sustainability as well. And then if you love your table and it's a beautiful wood table or a piece of art, a similar, same, it doesn't have to match. Um, these are just tear off placemats. Same thing, you can line them down your center, you can use them individually, it's just, I don't know, the way of the world is making things simple. So you clean up your mess so you can enjoy the rest of your party. So I highly recommend paper products, regardless of where you get them. But hopefully you come to Plant Haven Farms. And we've also used it to hide some of our stuff for the table. So see, it has so many uses. So you know the table's not done until it's overdone, here, right? Over here. And we're just going to line these down. And you can get these, it doesn't have to be as elaborate. Rhonda does everything incredibly beautiful. Thank you. Um, but it's also a great party favor. And if you go to your garden, it happens to be summer, and you pick some flowers, it's a fun little thing to give away as you know take-home party favor. And these are, are nestled into the garland itself. So, and they're all fresh. So you can totally mix, mix your, pardon me, your fresh and your faux items together, and the sense of the season are there. And um, I read an article recently that back in England, dating back in churches uh, in the mid-century, wherever they could find documentation, it stated that fresh greens were brought in at the holiday time. For the Christians of that time, it's, it mentioned that it thought made them think of eternal life and the regrowth at spring. So pine has been used in homes for many, many years and still enjoyed today. Um, Should we bring it up? Now, yeah, we got one more thing. You know what do they say? Uh, it's not done till it's overdone and go big or go home. And let me tell you, Rhonda is go big or go home and the bigger the better. And when you see these and the fact that I was having a heart attack that she made them 15 minutes before her first presentation. So I'm like, oh, I can do those in the morning. <laughs> which I did. So we had one done and Pauline's like, oh my gosh, we got nine minutes. I said, I'm okay, <laughs> got this. So I mean, look at this creation. I mean, that's pure Now talent. this is all fresh product. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, when you have a container like this, don't you think it needs something? The next level, because these are so the next level. So I wanna explain a little bit about this. They're not 
exact duplicates. They're more like cousins. <laughs> but that's okay. None of us are perfect. And again, it was, the second one was made in nine minutes. So I started with, how many of you know what a cuff is? A fur cuff that you put your hands in, fancy. I'm sure they had them in Bridgerton. Um, but this is, when I was first starting out in the industry, this was called chicken wire. Okay, then it went to um, poultry mesh. And now it's called floral mesh. Same thing, it's chicken wire. This is green though, it's not gonna rust. And so I made, cut a square, and cut it down to the size I want it to be. Now this one's much larger. And if you come up after the program, we can show you the bottom of it. I zip tied it all together at the bottom just to keep my stems this. together. Thank you, John, for the zip ties. A shout out to John Sella. Um, but then you can put your stems through this mesh. You remember the, the glass frogs and the metal frogs? I have some of those at home to put in bases and I love them. But this is just another twist on things you can use to make your designs. And they don't have to be this big. This could have all been done in faux. You could have packed it away for next year. Um, this but, is also what floral bouquets are, or what bridal bouquets are becoming the norm of, is they want the natural stems, they have this chicken wire, I don't even know what your fancy word was. A floral um, mesh. Floral mesh. And then they just tie a pretty satin ribbon around it. But if you see a bride walking down the aisle, it generally has this yes, floral mesh. Yes, their daughter's bridal bouquet was made in one of these, as all the bridesmaids. Because it lets you give that new unstructured look. I call that a twist on Flemish design. Um, because it's, it still has balance, the balance is just in a different form. So you can also make an armature out of your pliable curly willow. And this is called kubari. When you put something in a container that holds things in place, um, and it can go in a container you have at home. If you have a beautiful bowl at home that you want your arrangement to be in instead of this, one of these large containers, um, you can do something like this nature. Or you can put this on the inside and but, put your stems in but and it's, it's going to keep it together. This is really pretty. This is prettier, this. yes, in the clear. And we could have even done that in there, but we wanted to use feathers and show you the transition from fall to Christmas. I'm a big like believer. The trees are up before Thanksgiving. My kids love that. They've start they have that tradition at their home as well. So, I didn't always turn the lights on in the tree till after Thanksgiving dinner but I wanted to enjoy the holidays as long as I possibly could. So we tried to do our best to show you transition from Thanksgiving through the winter through Christmas, because this could actually stay up until January and you could add something else to it to give it a different look. Um, I also wanted to show you about how many of you like poinsettias? I know that was a thing of the past many years ago. I love them. Once again, it's the power of the plant. It's red, it's lush. And how many of you, you're going to hate me when I do this. I hope I you won't really hate me. I don't know if I have a little one. It's kind of smaller. How many of you get it home and, oh my gosh, one of them's broken? I broke the brack. Now what am I going to do? Um, if you take this stem and you take a lighted match. I didn't bring any matches. I didn't know if I'd break <laughs> the fire code rules. I don't want to burn down the gardens. Um, you sear the end of this stem with a match. All the liquid stays in that stem. Then you can take this. I just primped it, so I cut it again. I'd have to light the match end again. And you can put it in your floral foam. What kind of impact is that? That is powerful. That is beautiful. And poinsettias come in so many different colors. And wouldn't it be less, ex I'm not saying cut them all apart, but what if you did? <laughs> I mean, what if you decided, I want red on my table and dozen roses are so expensive. I'm going to buy myself a couple poinsettia plants and I'm going to make centerpieces for the holidays. So they will last about five to seven days in an arrangement. And I think they add a lot of color, a lot of impact, and does that not say Christmas to you? Oh, that one was back here. I know. Yeah. 
So um, Pauline and I really enjoyed it. Was, we worked hard on this together. We buddied up and got a lot of things done, and it was really great. But we want to open the floor to you now for questions. Does anybody yes. have any questions? Peach. So our question is, if you don't have any evergreens in your yard, where can you get them? Plant Haven Farms. <laughs> Silly question. Um, yes, we have fresh greens. We have fresh trees coming to our Oakville and um, Olivet location on Thursday. And then fresh greens to follow the week uh, of Thanksgiving. Question. Hit the black. So our question was, do we sell the faux greenery and the curly willow at our store? Of course we do. Everything here you can find, except for me and, well, me you can find, not Rhonda. Rhonda I'm at, normally at the telegraph location. <laughs> um, yes, everything is there. Curly willow we brought all to the show, so don't run there after this show and try to buy curly willow. Um, but hopefully we give, have given you a represent, representation of things that we sell, um, things I've learned from Rhonda, things Thanks Rhonda's learned from me. me. Um, and um, if you have any other questions. Anybody yes, else? Yes, in the gray. So our question is, what are we putting in the base of an outdoor planter? So we have, um, it's called floral foam, but pretty much any hard foam, and it's hard. I had to use like a big knife and it's this thick. Um, so you size up the size of your planter. So in this case, you do circles or maybe smaller squares. Um, and st as, as high as you want it. And then whatever size your insert, you know, if it's this big, you would put this to that height and you'd put your oasis, which is that green spongy looking brick that you submerge in water. And I learned from Rhonda, you don't dunk it, you let it submerge let it float itself. Down. Or else it gets bubbles. Um, so that's how you'd start it. And that you'd want to keep the oasis wet, not, not the rest of it. But the good thing about the, um, Having the, um, I've lost my train of thought, the white stuff. You know, stuff. we've been yep. working um, on this for hours. <laughs> having the foam in there is that you can, if you do use, like I, in this container, I did have picks and I put it in the floral foam and, or the, the, any kind of foam, so they, they stay sturdy. So if you have a windstorm or, you know, the dog wigs his tail, it's not coming flying out of there. Right. I've had, and I've had some customers that I, they actually left the soil in there porch pots. I'm sure mm -hmm. you have that too. Mm -hmm. And you, if you're going to do that, then you have to make sure you get to that before it's frozen solid and you're out there with the drill trying to make a hole. Right. That's happened. You're out in the cold and you're trying to make a porch pot. And sometimes what you can do is a quicker way. Um, if you're going to do that step and Pauline will have wreaths, put a wreath on top of your urn, stick your branches into that soil and you can stick your willow into that soil. And it will stay beautiful. Right. So there's multiple ways to do things. Um, anybody have any other questions? Well, Did we put you, you to sleep, guys? <laughs> yes. Yes. She asked if all the magnolia leaves are real. And yes, the ones we use today are real. Um, we can order more of that. Pauline will order that from a local wholesaler and she can get more curly willow. She will have some, but since the season is just gearing up and kicking up for most retailers, um, that kind of product will be coming in to her stores really soon. And we also carry faux magnolia. We just didn't bring it here today because we were trying to make this a more floral um, presentation. Um, and our, but our magnolia comes from a magnolia farm where literally they go out and harvest off the trees. They're in Florida and they two days ship it to us. So it's about as fresh as it can get. Thank Anything? you all for coming. Uh, yeah, and thank you oh, both. Um, sorry. Thank you both for bringing all this. Oh, I think Pauline has yes, one extra thing. So um, all, all of you that don't really know me don't know that I don't necessarily believe in the word sale. Um, one of the four letter words of the very few four letter words I don't believe in, but sale is one of them. <laughs> um, so on, the, on your way out, we have um, Robin and Bridget who work for me and make my world happen. Um, they have uh, cards for you guys to tell you about these two Sundays that we have live reindeer coming to our Olivet location, as well as a 20% off um, purchase, a one, one-time purchase between now and I think February 1st at one of our stores. We hope you'd come visit us. 
Um, we don't give it to anyone, it's just the people that came today. And if you grab a card on your way out, um, we hope we see you soon. Yes, thank, thank you, you for that.